Hey, Magic fans, welcome back. This is your captain speaking. Forgot my notebook because I'm prepared because I'm a professional. All right, I'm back. Welcome to Captain Clyde's MTG. We're doing the draft booster box eval, of course, going across what the eval was for our draft boosters for a case of six booster draft boxes. So first thing I'll do is I'll go through some of the sweet cards that we pulled. So... Uh, in these six, we pulled basically one of every sweet uh, Mystical Archive card that there is. The only thing we're missing really is the uh, uh, Tainted Pact, I believe is what it's called. But we hit everything else just just fantastic. And we had some more too. Um, these weren't all that great, but you know, there's still something. A couple dollars. Uh, plenty of rares, obviously. Uh, we ended up with two... We ended up with five full arts. Uh, three of them were dragons, two planeswalkers. Uh, here are the mythic cards of value. There were four dragons, uh, four planeswalkers out of all six boxes. There was two blacks, two of the overlords. We had one magmas opus, and that was it. Uh, the other mythics are here. Nothing too special, really. So, what does that look like? as an overall sum up. Well, as we go through this, uh, our box values came out as one box is 128, uh, which was the box with the Monarch Tutor, I believe. Um, so there you have it. Uh, we also had a box of 70, a box of 81, one box of 121. Um, we, I'm sorry, that was the 121 was the Monarch Tutor. The 128 had the uh, Teferi's Protection in it. My bad. Um, and then we had a box of 63 and a box of 75. So all in all, the box values were really bad except for two out of the six. It still gave us an overall average of $90, which is still below actual asking price of the boxes. Now, with that said, if you were to go through and you were to just buy an individual box, it's looking like you have less than a 50% chance to get a box that's going to score over $100. Now, if you do get one of those boxes, it scores up in the 120 to 130 range, apparently, uh, because you'll hit something really good, like a Teferi's Protection or maybe a Demonic Tutor, and that's what's going to drive your price up above that $100 mark. Uh, but other than that, there's not a lot of Mythics uh, throughout the boxes, and compared to a set booster, I really think draft boosters may not be the way to go. I know I said before that maybe they were, um, but, I mean, the average value of a set booster is 110 um, average value of this is 90. Me personally, the difference for me buying these from my supplier is only about five to ten dollars difference per box. Um, which means that if I buy a set booster, I save an extra ten bucks and I get more value. Um, and I'm sure it would probably be the same way for you guys out there too. Now, with that said, let's look at the mythic value too. Um, for uh, for mythics, the average was six per box. Um, in the set boosters, the average mythic count uh, for these boxes looks to be around four, uh, which is quite lower. And, and one box only had two mythics. I mean, it was a really bad box. Um, but that seems to be the same. The average um, box of rares for the draft... Uh, looks to be around 34 to 35 because, you know, the Mythic takes the place of the rare, yada, yada, yada. Um, if you look at the number of rares in the other, in the set booster boxes, you're looking anywhere from the minimum of 34, which is what this average is, upwards in 39 to 40 rares in a set booster box, even though there's six less packs. And you're getting one, maybe two more Mythics per box, even with those less packs too. So like all in all, the set boosters just have more in them. And then that doesn't include their list cards, which are just just bonuses in general. Now, I, I did say the list cards were really pulled back due to the Mystical Archives in this set, I do believe. And that's one of the big drawbacks to having the list with the Mystical Archives. But we still did pull, we did pull list cards that were still $10, $15, dollars in a couple boxes. So hitting one of those every now and then is still with a chance is still better than not having a chance at all, right? In the draft booster boxes. And then for mystical archives, there's only two or three mystical archive rares or mythics in every box, which is not all that great. Uh, for the archives, there's anywhere from two to eight mythics. Um, 
inside those archive, or I'm sorry, two to two to four mystical archive mythics in those boxes. Some boxes are a lot higher than that. I'm just averaging it. Um, so the base minimum in a set booster box, you're going to get what you got in this as far as uh, mythic goes, as far as for these. Um, but you can get up to four. Now, I'm not saying they're all going to be worth money, but the better chance you have at pulling them, and the more you pull, the better chance you have at grabbing one of these little sweet bad boys. So it's always something to be considered, right? So with that said, um, I do believe that um, looking at this, now once again, um, you know, I've opened most of the set booster boxes and I haven't put the videos live yet. This out of 24 boxes is the only one of these cards that I pulled. Literally just one. So this leads me to believe that there is a print issue um, or a a problem with the way that they pack at the facility or something because I've got everything else except for only got one of those out of 24 boxes and three of these. So either A, that's a serious sheet issue, which means these are way undervalued because there should be more because they're harder to get, or B, there's some deck out there that these are going to be really valuable in and they're purposely restricting how much and how many you get to drive the price up to make you want to buy more boxes. Now, it's all conspiracy theory, tin foil hat stuff, guys. I know. I get it. But I just want to be honest with you because there's no reason for me to lie to you about what I put out of the boxes. I mean, you're going to see every video. You're going to see exactly what happens, exactly what I pull. And I would like to think that if you watch the video and see the end of it, you'll have the same concerns, let's say, about how some things don't get hit at all and how some things seem to continually get hit over and over again, which makes you wonder, is the price right for the way the things are separated? And when the sheets are made, are the sheets made right to get enough of these cards into circulation? Now, this could be... Now, this is just one side of it, right, guys? There could be somebody else making these videos or doing box openings that's not making videos who's going to have the complete opposite of me where he's doing nothing but pulling all of these and all of these and missing out on some of this other stuff. And that's how it's all like go together in the long run to make us do trading and buying and selling and all that stuff. But at the same time, is that even a healthy environment for a collectible card game? So that's just some food for thought for you. T take it for what you will. Like I said, it's all tinfoil hat conspiracy stuff. Um, and it's not that I'm really into that kind of thing, but it does raise the question of, is it supposed to be this way? Is this how it's supposed to go down? And I think, you know, we should, we know it's gambling basically, right? Doing this and you're just kind of going with the flow and hoping you get the best. But sometimes it makes you wonder, you know, you're putting this money in. What's the real chance of you getting something back of value? You know, because the way I'm looking at this right now, you know, the draft boosters are selling for like $140. The average box value is $90. Um, and they're selling for $140 because there's, no, there's none of them available because so there's not printing them. For for 140, and you're gonna get back 90 dollars of value at best. The best box I pulled was 128. You still lose 12 dollars just in card value, not including what you lose to you know seller fees, shipping fees. Like I I know that they're trying to push people to set booster boxes to pad their pockets and everything. And like I mentioned before, maybe this is going on to a point where they're going to make draft boxes bad enough that, you know, they're selling for 140 right now, they're only worth 90 or nobody's going to want to buy them because they're just not worth the money. And the odds of getting something out of them are just horrendous. I mean, the way it's going right now, guys, if you really want to invest in something and you want to put a box back in a closet and keep it for something, you really, I, I guess, I know I say this a lot, I know people don't like them, but collector booster boxes are what's supposed to be put in the closet and, and kept for later sale. Because, like, for example, the Mystical Archive boxes, uh, collector boxes, you know, they have a chance. They have three or four of these in them. They have the Japanese versions in them, which are even more valuable than anything else. They're the real chase cards here, not just these. The Japanese altars are. And that's where the value is going to be. Nobody's going to want to draft booster box, you know, and open it when all you're really looking for when you open that box is maybe one or two of these cards. You know, maybe the Nature's Order, Teferi's Protection, or Time Warp, Demonic Tutor. And then maybe a Dragon or two, but once they rotate out of Standard, nobody's going to care. 
except for a couple of commander players, but the price will still drop because of it, because it's not in standard. You know, maybe one or two planeswalkers. You know, is it really worth spending six, seven hundred dollars for six boxes to get three or four cards? I mean, you could just buy those cards for a hundred bucks. Or maybe two hundred, right? And easily get back and save four hundred dollars and have the cards that you want without having to open all these packs, do the trash, sell the extra. Just doesn't make sense, guys. So once again, I'm gonna state um, sadly enough, um, there's no point to buying draft booster boxes. You should definitely be buying set boxes to because the value is just higher. And if you want something to save, definitely buy a collector booster box and put it in the closet. You know, we're past the age where draft booster boxes are able to be stored in a closet and give you value, I think. Um, and we'll have another video on that later. Uh, that's really too deep to get into. We're already past 10 minutes. I don't want to hold you guys up too long while you listen to me ramble. So, with that said, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know when these videos go live. And as always, let's get out there to our local LGS, support your stores, support your vendors, support whoever it is you're buying from in singles and markets and, and sealed because they need your help just as much as anybody else does. And Wizards of the Coast sure doesn't because they've got plenty of money and they can just print cards. With that said, guys, remember, better community, nicer community. Until next time, remember to be kind. This is your captain speaking, and I'll see you in the next video of Set Boosters.